Good evening. This is Bremster, and tonight I'm coming to you with a puzzle from the March of the Quads puzzle pack. So, yes, this is the puzzle pack that I've currently got running on my channel, but this is the puzzle from the pack that most people have contacted me about to say that they were after a little bit of a push um, to get over the hurdle with, or they got stuck with, or they weren't sure how to progress with it. And this is a puzzle, um, this is actually one that I put most of the work into. And this was a puzzle that was put together in order to use a trick with quadruples that had come um, from a lot of the discoveries we'd made and a lot of the deductions that we'd made about quadruples and to showcase some of the deductions from quadruples that had been revealed to solvers earlier in the pack, but in a slightly more, or not elegant, but in a, in a more required way. So rather than have um, people constantly being stuck on this puzzle, I thought what I would do is I would do a video on it. And I know it may seem a bit weird to be doing a video on a puzzle for a pack that I'm currently running um, on my channel, but you know, uh, I run things pretty loose here and I just tend to do, I do what I want on this channel and this is what I want to do. Um, so people have been stuck, I'm going to help them out because it's about the puzzles. It's not about doing things in a particular way. People are stuck, I'm going to help them. So, um, so yeah, as I said, this is from March of the Quads. The links to the pack will be below as well as a link to this specific puzzle. Um, March of the Quads, 40 quadruples puzzles broken into three sets of difficulties. The Walks in the Park, which are the easier puzzles in the pack that most people have been able to work through without any problems. Um, quad to the Max um, is from the middle difficulty, which are the scenic hikes. Um, these are the more difficult puzzles. Quad to the Max is probably one of the more challenging puzzles in the scenic hikes. And then you've got the Treks into the Wilderness, which are definitely the hardest puzzles in the pack. Um, so, yeah. So... Yeah, let's go into how this works. So this is definitely not a blind solve for me um, because I pretty much did most of the work on making this puzzle. So what I want to do is I want to show you some of the tricks that have been put into this puzzle. Um, this has kind of been about a month since I um, put all the work into this puzzle. So I kind of know what I put in, but not exactly where I put it. So while it's not a blind solve, I'm not scripted this solve. Like I don't know exactly where everything is, but I kind of know what I'm looking for and where. So hopefully this will be fairly smooth. Um, so yes, this is just a quadruple puzzle. Well, just, I keep doing that. The only rules in play in this are normal Sudoku rules and quadruples. So what does that mean? Normal Sudoku rules. In every box, in every row, and in every column, the digits 1 to 9 must be placed without repetition. Then there's the quadruples rules. And the quadruples rules is what is the basis of everything in March of the Quads, which are these circles. When you have a circle like this, what it means is the digits in the circle must be placed at least once in the four, circle, uh, four cells touching that circle. So we know there will be a 1 in these four cells. There will be a 1 in these four cells. There will be a 4 in these four cells. There will be a 3 and an 8 in those four cells. That's what we know about this puzzle. Um, there will be a, so it, up here it was, there'll be a one and a five in those three, uh, those four cells. Well, those three, because there's already an eight there. I'm really getting my numbers wrong and I'm doing a Sudoku puzzle. Let's hope I do better moving forward. But they're the rules, so quadruples. Um, num numbers in circles must touch the circle. That's it. Uh, at least once. That's it. So with that, this puzzle is solvable. I'm going to, if you want to give this puzzle a, a shot, please Try the link um, at the top of the description that will um, uh, take you to the puzzle where you can try it yourself. Um, if you want to see me to go, um, I'm going to go straight into the tricks that are required for this because, as I said, this one has stumped quite a few people. So I'm going to show this one now. Let's give this a shot. So the big trick that I wanted to showcase in this, um, I will basically reveal pretty quickly. You don't need it exactly, um, but it is a trick um, that there's a couple of ways of getting to it, but I wanted the one of the um, quadruples tricks that 
is when I said it, it's a it's a trick I had in mind, even though you don't need to use it exactly as it was. So what I want to um, highlight is if you look, there is these aligning one clues in the top row. Not worried about the five and the six at this point, just the fact that ones must be at the top. And you can do the same down here with twos, and you can do the same down here with threes, and you can do the same over here with fours. And this is deliberate. Um, so the logic I do on ones will be repeatable. So up here, ones must go into those cells. You must put a one in here and a one in here. That will take up all of the, we know in row one, there must be one, one, and in row two, there must be one, one. And we've highlighted that they must go in here. Now, because of this, we can mark ones into those two positions, because these are the positions we've got in row one and two for ones, and these are the only two cells that we've highlighted when we've done that. Now, that means for one of two reasons, we can remove ones from those two cells. There are two ways we can do it. One is we know that one must go in these two, so we can remove it from there. Another way you could do this without actually um, doing this full highlighting of all of the possible candidates is if you were to look at this cell on its own before I did the highlighting, what you can do is you can see that this cell here could never have taken a one because this cell sees all three of those cells. And if you were to put a one here, you could never put a one around this quadruple. And that's the trick that I was playing with when I first set this. So the ones can only go in those positions. Now I'm actually going to pencil mark the ones there, even though this is normally your pencil mark boxes. I'm just going to remember that these ones for now only count for these quads. Now I'm actually going to remove one of those in a minute because I just wanted to mark this to show you something. So we know that in this these two rows, the ones are in those positions. Now we can look at box three. Because in box three, we cannot put one in any of those spots and we cannot put one here because of this one here. But we couldn't put ones in these spots because the ones have to go here in the row. So this means one in box three must go into one of these two spots. And if we get rid of this one pencil mark, we now have the one placed into two slots in these boxes. And these are complete pencil marks for those boxes. And this knocks out those. And now where can we put the one on this quad? It must go there. And this one can be placed right um, from the logic. So these one qu one quads and that one and that one quad places that one. And that was a key deduction for the break into this puzzle. And then you can look here with twos and repeat the deduction. Twos must go into one of those two slots because of exactly the same positioning of twos. Because twos now can't go into any of those three cells, um, and this two knocks out that one. Twos now must go into those. These twos now look over and knock out that two, and this becomes a two. Threes have to go here and here. You can't place them here, or you wouldn't be able to place any in row eight, or they are cancelled out by, would knock out from the um, quad. This now means that you, because of this anyway, you can't place threes in any of these cells because of that three here and that one not being able to be done by the threes across here. Threes must go into these and this must be the three for the quad. And then you can do the same for the fours. The fours must go here, which means fours must go here, which when you go over here places that four. And that is the um, the first part, well, that is the key break in to this puzzle is being able to place these one, two, threes and fours. You've got a couple of other things you can do, of course. So, and this is what a lot of people will jump into first. This six looks up to this one six clue and places six here. Um, this five, is it this five? I'm not sure. So this eight jumps over to here and places those eights. Um, there are a few of these and I'm trying to find them. Uh, this six jumps over here and places sixes here. This seven jumps over here and places sevens here because you must put a seven on this quad and you can't place it in those two. You must place a six on this quad and you can't place it in those two. So these are actually placed. 
Um, you must place a seven on this quad, and that seven means you can't place it there, so they must go there. You must place an eight on this quad, and this eight means you can't place it in those, they must go there. The other thing you've got is from these ones, and you could have done this as you were working around the border, but you can do it at any point once you've got these ones placed, because remember you must place one in these two, otherwise you can't complete these quads. Once you've got ones placed here, ones must go into one of those two in order for this quad to happen, because if you place them in those two cells, you've broken this. Twos now must go here for the same reason, threes must go here for the same reason, and fours must go here for the same reason. So you're starting to get a lot of restrictions on um, this stuff in the middle. So quite a few people have gotten to this point with a couple of hints and then been a little bit lost as to where to go next, hence me doing this video. This next step is probably the, the final tri really tricky step, um, but and I'm going to keep solving the puzzle through anyway. So the next couple of cells that you might want to look at or you, can, um, you should look at are these ones. And I'm going to start with this one, basically where the twos are. Though you can start in these ones, these ones are more restricted. If you look at this cell, you will notice that it actually sees quite a lot of things. It cannot be a one. It can't be a two because the two has to be placed in one of those cells. It cannot be a three. It cannot be a four. It cannot be a five. It cannot be a six. It cannot be a seven. It cannot be an eight. This is a naked single. It has to be a nine. This cell now cannot be a one, cannot be a two, cannot be a three, cannot be a four, can be a five, cannot be a six, cannot be a seven, cannot be an eight, cannot be a nine. This becomes a five. We can then jump over to this cell which cannot be a one, cannot be a two, cannot be a three, cannot be a four, can be a five, cannot be a six, cannot be a seven, cannot be an eight, and because of that one, cannot be a nine. This becomes a five. And this one cannot be a one, cannot be a two, cannot be a three, cannot be a four, cannot be a five, cannot be a six, uh, cannot be a seven, cannot be an eight, that becomes a nine. And these become hidden singles by the placement of these quads um, once you've been able to do some of the extra eliminations. So what comes next? So once you've got those in, the rest of the grid kind of becomes, a, it's still tricky, but that's the key, they're the two key deductions you need to make in order for this grid to effectively be able to be unraveled. Um, we do know now in the middle, because we can't place one, two, three, four, or five, this will be six, seven, or eight. You also can't place nine. So this is a six, seven, or eight in the middle. Um... I think the place that I normally start, or the place that I was looking at now, is these rows and columns. Um, and I'm probably going to start with this one, though I don't remember ex exactly which one is the best to start with. I think you can start at any of them. Um, some of them are more restricted than others, but if you do all of them, then they, I believe they collapse. So if I was to pencil mark these... I've got one, I need two, three, six, and seven. So up here, I cannot place two because two has to go into those two cells. So these ones can't be two. Uh, this can't be seven. Um, and I think I'm okay. This one can't be six because six has to go up here. This one can't be seven. And I think I'm okay. This one can't be two, which I've already done. So this may have been the wrong place to start. So maybe let's try, I'll keep going around. Let's try this bottom one. So this is three, four, seven, or eight. So this can't be eight. I may have missed something. It's been a while. Uh, these one, uh, this one can't be four because of the pointing four. Oh, that's an important thing. I think, uh, not on the, oh yes, this one can't be three because of those pointing threes there. Uh, so this one can't be four because of those pointing fours. 
Uh, this one can't be eight. This one can't be seven. Um, and this one can't be seven or three because the three has to be down here. That three there is knocking it out. Um, that did not go as well as I'd hoped. Maybe I should have started at the top. Let's do that. One, two, five, and six. So this can't be five. Uh, they can't be one on the ends. And did I do the right thing here? No, this can't be a three because three has to be here. So this can't be three either. So this is two or six. Um, this one can't be six. Uh, this one can't be two because of the pointing twos. I feel I've missed something. I really do feel I've missed something. I thought this collapsed easier than this. This one can't be six because of that six. Huh. I mean, it's kind of okay that I've missed something. I'm just trying to remember what it was. It's okay. I'll figure it out at some point. And that's part of what solving is. Um, let's do this one. I was sure it was this columns in a row. One, four, eight, and nine. So this can't be four, it can't be eight, and it can't be one. So it was this. It can't be one because one has to go in one of those two, because I will place one of the ones here. If I place a one here, there'll be a one here. If I place a one here, there'll be a one here. This is a nine. So I can take nine out of all of those. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. This one can't be a four because four has to go into one of those two. So once there is no nine in there, um, ah, this nine means that I cannot put a nine in either of those two cells, but I need to put a nine around that quad. This becomes a nine. I'm sure there was more to it than this. Hmm. Um, I'm probably just missing something. That's okay. We will get there together. Um, Oh, yes, again, this can't be a four. And the reason, and similarly, this can't be a two. Two is in one of those slots. That's what I was missing. And it's the same thing. So two is in one of those slots. So it cannot be in one of those slots. Um, so if two is here, sorry, if two is here, then two is here to fulfill that quad. If two is here, two is here. Either way, this cannot be a two. This becomes a six. I can take six out of those, but more importantly, I can take six out of there. That becomes a three. This becomes a seven. This becomes a two. It was this one. Um, and this becomes a three. Um, -da -da. This seven now makes this a four, which makes this an eight, which makes this a three, which makes this a seven. This eight makes this a one, which takes one out of those and they become four eight. I uh, can't put an eight there because I need to put an eight on this quad and I could never have put it down here. Um, this eight actually knocks out both of those. This becomes the eight. This becomes the four. Um, that four doesn't resolve this yet, um, big, or doesn't re doesn't actually mean that that can't be a four because I can have more than one four on that. Um, so what is next? Um, I'm not a hundred percent sure at this point. Uh, why is that not resolved? sure it really matters at this point. Probably I've just forgotten something. Um, so I do need to put a two on this quad and I can't put it in either. I can't put it there. So this becomes the two. This is not the six anymore. And I've broken the puzzle. Because... I don't know how long ago I posed the I broke the puzzle, but what I should have done is this was not a three. There's a three there. This is a six. That's what I did to break the puzzle. This two now sees this, and this is the two. That's what I did wrong. Um, this seven now sees this four. Sorry about that, everyone. I'm 
shouldn't be recording this late at night, possibly. This becomes the eight, this becomes the three, this becomes the seven. This is why people get stuck. I'm really sorry. This is the one. There is no one in either of these. Um, I'm so sorry about that, everyone. And this is a four eight, but once again, the eight has to go down here because it can't go here. So this is the four. No, this is the eight. This is the four. I'm doing it again. This is not the eight. This does not, however, force one of these to be a four. I do, however, need to put a four into one of these two. And that does mean that's not the four. And this is the four. But I, oh, I do know there's a four there. So that becomes the four. Uh, do I have anything else resolved at this point? Probably, but I seem to be dropping a lot of balls right now. So this is three, five, and six. Um, this one is not a three. Um, this one is one, eight, and nine. And this one is not a one or a nine. That is an eight. So I can take eight out of those. In fact, I can fully resolve it because that nine sees both of them. That is the one, that is the nine. Once this is a one, I can now not put one on either of those, but I do need to put a one on this quad. This becomes the one, this becomes the five, this becomes the two. Um, and where do I look now? Possibly this triple. So I need one, five, and seven. I cannot put one at the top. So one comes out of there. That becomes a one. This is a five, seven pair which is not obviously resolved, but I do have a pair here. I need to put a six on this quad though, so that becomes a six. Um, I do need to put a five on this quad and this one rules it out of there. So this becomes the five, this becomes the seven. This is the only missing digit from the row, which is a two. These become three, seven, and eight. This one cannot be a three, this one cannot be a seven. So all of these quads continue to provide that weird pressure from that pairing at the start. You just have to remember to keep applying it. And that was the whole thing with this puzzle. That break-in just keeps being used over and over and over. Um, this is a five or a six, which is all that is missing from the column, but there's a five in the box. So that's the six. This is the five, and I can take five out of both of those. This three six pair, does not seem to be resolved, but I do need to put an eight on this quad. So this becomes the eight. Um, I do need to put a three on this quad. So this is the six, this is the three. Um, now I've got the three on this. I need to put a three on this and I cannot put it there. So this becomes the three. Um, this is now a one, two, three, four, nine pair, and there is a four right there. So that becomes the nine, that becomes the four. This is two and five. That two is looking down, making that the five and that the two. And this becomes a triple, which is one, six, and nine. That one is looking down, meaning that's not a one, that's not a nine, and that is not a six. So again, that has some results. Now, what is next? Let's put this triple in, which is one, two, and seven. This one means that's not a one. The two means that's not a two. This one, however, there is, and this is where these start coming into play, although they do a bit all over the place. These ones take one out of there, which means this is the one. Um, these threes are not in play yet. Those fours have already done their trick, I think. So... Um, oh, this one is looking down there, making that the one, which makes that the six, which makes that the nine, which makes that the one. Uh, this is not the one. Um, six now looks up. This is not the six. Uh, twos and twos are lined up. This is a pair. I need to put a seven on this quad, though, so that is the seven. This now has to be a three. Um, one, two, three, four, five, and eight. There is a four here. This is not the four. This is not the five. This is not the eight. Um, where to look now? As you can see, I'm kind of running out of options to put things on. Um, oh, this eight is looking up, making that the seven. This is not the seven. This is a three, eight, but this is a triple. One, two, three, four five and six. This one cannot be a four because the four has to go on the quad. It also cannot be a six. This becomes the five. I take five out of there. The six looks over making this a four and this a six. The four makes this five, eight, 
four. Um, this now in the row has to be two and seven. There's a seven looking up. This becomes the two. This becomes the seven. This becomes the two. There has to be a seven in one of those two, because, but there's four sevens looking into the box. We drop a seven right in the middle. All that's missing from this row now is an eight, I believe. Yes, which makes this a three, which makes this an eight. And now we just finish off the middle box by dropping in a three and a nine. And that is quad to the max. People who got stuck on this puzzle, I really do understand why. The break-in trick by having to find the fact that the ones being forced onto these quads, being able to take it out of those, getting these pointing pairs, using the pointing pairs to find this, or the, the pointing um, cells to find this pointing set, list of pointing digits, which then places these, and then as well as those pl um, pointing ones, I mean, the trivial, moderately trivial one of the sevens, meaning seven has to be in here, or and the eight, meaning eights have to be in here and everything. And then the combination of all of that to find these very hidden singles, and then using the pressure of all of that to just keep building on the, um, I think it's those cells, or it might be those cells, or whichever one, yeah, it's those ones that are left over as the four only options, which are then pointed to by the fact that this was down to a couple of digits, and it couldn't be, for example, this was two six, and it couldn't be the two, because two had to be one of those two, or else you would have to put two twos in this box. That being used over and over, I understand that that was tricky for a lot of people, and even that initial trick of, of those, hard to spot. But the whole point was, by the time you got this far through the pack, you've used that sort of um, elbow deduction um, of something being here, forcing it out of another quad a few times as an elimination technique, just never as a break-in technique. I hope you found that puzzle interesting. I'm sorry that I didn't present it very well. I'm... It, I won't go into why, but it's been a really rough week. Um... So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it was sounded a bit like a lecture. I've actually been giving lectures at work <laughs> recently, so I'm kind of in that mode. Um, I hope you found it fun. I hope you tried the puzzle first. Um, and if you did enjoy this and you were and you found the logic interesting, and you haven't yet tried the March of the Quads, please do. Most of the puzzles in the pack are way or well, not way easier, but definitely easier than this. Um, and a lot of the quadruple logic we found, I think, is incredibly fun. So if you like puzzles, please give the pack a look. Um, thank you very much for watching. And as always, all I can say is good luck with your solving.